What's going on, Flix Talkers? Welcome back to another first time watching. This time, a sequel for a film that I did review back in December, guys, right before Christmas. And ironically, I didn't even know it was centered around the holiday time. I just got lucky with that one. But it is a sequel to Lethal Weapon, Lethal Weapon Deuce, guys. 1989, so we're jumping right to the end of the 80s, guys. I had a fun time with the first one, so go check out my thoughts right after this. I'm going to leave it down in the description below, guys, so you can check it out. And if you guys could do me a favor before we get into the video, please hit that thumbs up. It always does help the channel immensely. And if you are here for the first time, consider joining the Flix Talk family today by hitting that subscribe and bell notification to always get notified about future content like this. All right, so without further ado, let's gear up for another action-packed film with Murtaugh and Riggs. Mel Gibson and Danny Glover. <laughs> this screams 80s. You really are crazy. <laughs> Twenty bucks on Riggs and Murtaugh. Who's driving? Murtaugh and his wife station wagon. I'll take it Wait, I mean, nothing too. about the wife station wagon. Bets, hey, Bets are off with the wife station wagon. Dude, this ain't Chevy Chase and Christmas vacation, man. You better relax. <laughs> right out the gate, we're getting all kinds of crazy stuff going on. This is just like the end of Lethal Weapon, the first one, where... Oh, he caught up to him quick. Uh -oh. Here we go. Looks like a scene of heat right now. I love shootout scenes like this. What the hell? It's like Mission Impossible 3. Yeah, these guys gotta be German or Russian coming out like that. Out the gate with the, <laughs> with the helicopter. Stop arguing like an old, bitter couple. Go scour the perimeter for this guy. Come on. That's a waste of time arguing. <laughs> oh. You know, I worked psycho ward rings. You're never going to get out of here. Give it up, babe. <laughs> Everybody's betting on something. And yeah, Houdini Jr. here betting he can free himself inside of five minutes. Hank Schrader, baby. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say, don't you have to pop your arm out of the socket or yeah. something for that? That'd be great. Hey, everybody, listen up, listen hey, up. Hey, hey. Uh, tonight, besides his beautiful daughter, Ms. Rianne Murtaugh, here hey, she is. Hey, hey. She's gonna be making her television debut in a commercial. <laughs> oh, 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 oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh no, it's gonna be some kind of erotic thing. Remember. Use Ramsey's extra condoms. We do. do. Ramsey's extra. <laughs> hey, a gig is a gig, man. <laughs> ah, even the repairman in the back is watching. Hey, what's with you, Rod? She was great. She looked beautiful. Yeah, I liked it. She made me want to go out and buy rubbers right now. <laughs> However, we did lose over a million dollars in Kruger and on our. I'm sorry, Mr. Rudd. Uh, it happens. He's dead. I'm supposed to be meeting her for dinner, and uh, my arms up to my eyeballs in work. I forgot about the whole thing. I guess she waited at the restaurant for an hour before she decided to drive home alone. They told me she was killed in a car crash. So this is cool because they never really gave explanation about the wife in the first film, other than he was very distraught. I mean, you could. I, I was guessing the whole time in the first movie that they just broke up because maybe he was a gun nut, alcoholic. I'm glad that they can, you know, pull a story from the first one and bring it into the sequel, just so we're kind of not left with any plot holes. So, as a police officer, I think like in the first one, once you do some, you know, no gooders, they lose a bunch of money, they made it out, you gotta assume they're gonna be after you and your family, just like in the end of the first movie. So be quick on your toes, man. Don't be watching Three Stooges again. After this, it gets bloody. Now you tell your people to back off. 
Don't you go being a smart keffer. You don't ever really see that. They went in there as a warning. Yeah. Yeah. Did friends get back on anything right. with that? Yeah. No, nothing yet. Okay. Sure. Well, you're all invited to watch my back tomorrow. Poker. Don't be late. My house. Hey, hey, hey count me in. I'm the big winner. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Even though he got hog tied up, he's like, hey, poker tomorrow? Right, we there, baby. Special. Guy by the name of Getz, Leo Getz, has been placed in protective custody, and you two guys are going to babysit him until Washington sends out the feds. That was easy. Don't you want to see a badge? Don't do that again. Oh, shit. Shit, man. <laughs> now, I knew Pesci was part of the series, but I didn't know he was in the second one. Hey, I didn't order a hamburger. I ordered it. You're punching the wrong guy. Your cops aren't too bright, are you? Okay, 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 Oh my god. <laughs> you really are crazy, Riggs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no! Dude, this is like some Final Destination stuff. That score was so nerve wracking, by the way. <laughs> it really kept me on the edge of my seat. Once again, there goes their perp. I mean, just like in the last movie, guys, they're after these guys for information. Once they get to them, they end up dead. What's your name? What's your name? Pierre. Pierre Von Worsch. Oh, fuck, I'll just call you Adolf. Are you Arjun? Arjun Red? Ar Aryan? What? what? Oh, my God. I'll just call you Adolf. <laughs> and we do have a serious diplomatic situation here. You got me quaking in my boots, but I'm still gonna bring you down. <laughs> you could not even give me a barking ticket. Ooh. Well, they're definitely corrupt. I mean, they're working both sides of it, but um, yeah, it's gonna be hard to take down people with uh, this diplomatic status, right? A tougher mission for Riggs and Murtaugh. Here, I'm sorry, Miss Consulate Secretary. The way she's looking at Riggs, you know she's gonna help him out in the end. The way the formulation of these movies work, there's always someone on the inside or someone close to the villains that ends up helping them out because they had a change of heart or they liked the main lead, something like that. <laughs> it's a rubber plant, sorry. <laughs> it's a rubber plant. <laughs> hey, Murtaugh called it, man. He knew they were gonna bust his balls at the office. <laughs> and there you go, there you go, there's that laugh. Hey, man, in your old age, you gotta laugh at stuff like that, right? Has Murtaugh checked in with you today? Well, no, he hasn't. Why? I haven't heard from him. He doesn't answer his phone. Rod? Rod? In here. <laughs> the hell? Oh, crap. <laughs> Be okay if you don't stand up. That's got to be the worst way to die, too. <laughs> How embarrassing. Go. You two Riggs. No. Riggs is loyal. That's what I do love about his character. I mean, the only one that understands him is Mert in a crazy way. But he's loyal. <laughs> Once again, these, these guys have great chemistry. I love it. We go on three. Three on three. One, two, and nine. Three. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. Amen. That's that bromance. They've been through a lot of shit together, no pun intended. One. Two. Three! Oh, it really did. <laughs> the toilet flew. <laughs> that would have been his ass, literally. Now they can survive anything now. I'll make a deal with you, Arjun. Arjun, is that a Aryan or whatever? 
whatever the fuck your name is. I'll make a little deal with you. I'll leave you alone. Because if you stick around here, I'm going to fuck your ass. <laughs> what an insult. Just get out of here. Kaffir lover. Okay, now he says Kaffir lover. That's the second time I've heard that word. So I'm only guessing that Kaffir means uh, the N-word. Because he did say it to Murtaugh. How's it hanging, Ryla? What the hell do you want? I hope better than your buddy Murtaugh. What the fuck do you want? I'm a cop, you son of a bitch. No, you were a cop, Ryla. Right? <laughs> Damn. Couple oh, here we go, man. They're going to be taking out cops left and right now. I remember that's the mom uh, of Robert Furlong in Terminator 2. They love their explosions, don't they? No, oh, I'm guessing all these guys are gonna get taken out at one time. Just like that. Wow. Leo, I thought I told you to stay in the car. Shit. Doing some karate on uh, <laughs> Daddy Glover. And by the way, I think it's good to note that we haven't heard the phrase "I'm too old for this shit" yet. <laughs> Get a nail gun to the forehead. I knew it was going to be sooner or later that they had to retire the old trailer. Ooh, got him, baby. Got him. See, now he can shoot the helicopter. The first one he couldn't. Now he can. <laughs> I'm the guy that changed the course of your life, man. Four years ago, Riggs, when he was a knock down at Long Beach, you were getting too close to us, so we put a contract out on you. Drove your car right off the fucking road, remember? Your wife, right? Oh, no. The ultimate vengeance right here. He killed his wife? So I should have saw that him getting out of that straight jacket was foreshadowing for this. Once again, predicting <laughs> that he's gonna get out of this by popping his shoulder out, floating to the top, and killing this son bitch right here. Whoa. Didn't see that coming. Oh man, here we go. We're gonna see. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we're going to see Riggs at his craziest now. Whoa. Damn. A truck can take down that structure? That really wasn't built that well then. <laughs> what? No way. <laughs> no. What the hell? It's just so weird to hear that name Trump in, you know, in these times. I mean, because he was such a different person back then. I mean, at least to the general public. Damn. He unloaded on that dude a whole clip. <laughs> there we go. Another spin roll. Yeah, that's what I like to see. That's from the first one. <laughs> Ooh, damn. Jeez, everybody knows karate, huh? And this is the guy that killed his wife, supposedly. Make him die slow, dude. Pull up, yeah! Pull up on that. <laughs> die slow. Wait a minute. Is he going to drop something on it? Oh, God. I swear to God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Ooh. Drop an asshole. Diplomatic community. Not tonight. Just been revoked. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Murtaugh is a great shot, by the way. 
We know that he lives based on the sequels where he's in them. But if he were to die, I'd be satisfied because he got his revenge from the guy who killed his wife. And he killed him in a cool way, too. So, kind of did what he needed to do in this world. <laughs> They're too good to die, man. I'm sorry. Like, they, we need more of them on screen. And credits roll. There we go, baby. Lethal Weapon 2, 1989. And there you have it, Flix Talkers. I just completed Lethal Weapon 2. I had a really good time with that. If I'm being completely honest, probably a little more of a fun time than the first one, just because the pacing was, you know, kind of there for me. Kind of what I would expect in a sequel, just done a lot better, because we know sequelitis is a thing usually where the sequels get worse. But in this case, it amped up the action. It really hyped up a lot of things for me that I kind of built off the first one. So now that we know what these characters have been through, you know, just them kind of buddy cop, they've grown accustomed to each other by the end of the first film. They've been through a lot of events. Now with the second one, we know that it's just hijinks galore. And we got an introduction to Pesci, which I believe is in the sequels after this one as well. And I enjoyed his characters. I thought it would have been a little too much comedy, but his character was integral to this plot and I had a good time with it. It wasn't overbearing, it wasn't too obnoxious. Now, all of that being said, guys, my final score on Lethal Weapon 2, I gotta give a solid four out of five, saying I would definitely recommend this one. Definitely amped up the action. I thought it had its more dramatic points and the score was just really, really blaring. Writing was good as usual. And I think based on Shane Black's kind of writing, it flowed extremely well. All right, Flix Talkers, let me know in the comments down below what you guys thought of my first time watch for Lethal Weapon 2. Where do you rank Lethal Weapon? to in the franchise let me know once again in the comments below hit me with that thumbs up it always does help the channel out and consider subscribing today and hitting that bell notification to join the flicks talk family all right guys till next video i'm gone peace